Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. Today, we are going to look at the amazing Lanil Yu, Jerry Alleguelen, Richard Friend, and colorist Dave Stewart. So, um, I've only inked Lanil a little bit, but I did one full issue in this book, but that wasn't why I picked it. I picked it because I actually really like this series, and, uh, generally if I share art from it, people get pretty excited and they love it, so, um... I think there's a lot of fans of it out there because it's, it's a little different for, um, I guess this was a Wildstorm book. I was trying to think if it was Image or DC. I honestly don't know. It says Warner Brothers. So anyway, so there's a few little prelim sketches in the front. They're very, very cool. And rest in peace, uh, Jerry. He passed away um, within the last year. So... Jerry is Lanil's longtime inker, and uh, for whatever reason, uh, issue five, uh, he was too busy. I don't know if he was working on maybe two books at once or something, but uh, they needed an inker for a full issue, so I stepped in and helped out. So good, man. What's nice about Lanil's stuff on this series, I always felt, was that it was a little understated. Like, he got that way with his work, where he was, he would draw a little bit less um, and kind of make it more, but, but it, it overall he details the right stuff so you you know you always kind of get that that fun so here we'll look at this like this is not um simple but really cool perspective on this too he's kind of got like a little bit of like a warping kind of thing going on right this is cool too We hit the ground running on this one. I'm like, I'm like serious business. We got super fun Sunday to do, and it's gonna be super fun. As long as my cat is an asshole, leave those papers alone. But head, I had to go through all my tax stuff. <laughs> I've got a big pile of papers. Get out of those, shit head, move. <laughs> Sorry about that. They always want to be on YouTube any way they can. Oh, it's so good. He has great designs for the costumes, too. I mean, it, it's, again, it's like he just chooses everything very, very um, judiciously, and it just looks good. Really cool storytelling right here. What's funny is I, I first found Lanil stuff online. I don't know if I had seen it in a comic book yet, but he had this very bizarre but very, very cutting edge website. And Lanil, if you ever see this, you'll laugh because I'm probably one of the few people that actually uh, will remember your early, early like dot com, but it was called Sugar Spam Factory, something like that. And uh, it was just this crazy cool art that was like, it looked like Jim Lee and Wills. It looked like Travis. It looked like Simon Bisley. It was just, I was like, who is this guy? Um, and uh, his his site even had like animation, which back at that point was really, really um, unusual. Or like, it had like rooms that you could go through and the rooms would like light up. Something like that. I wish uh, I had uh, a screen recorder back then because it would have been really cool to... Uh, see it. I don't know if the Wayback Time Machine would still have that archive. That was a long time ago. Pretty funny though, but yeah, so I saw his stuff there and was just like, whoa, man, this guy's awesome. And then I started searching out um, the stuff he was doing at Marvel at the time. Wow, look at that tree. is so great. Yeah, the internet used to be like the Wild West. Now it's like, I don't even know. I can't really compare it to what it was. Maybe the dark web is like that. <laughs> I remember first seeing Adi Granov stuff. He posted like whips of this like little um, Travisy Meta Baron looking character, and he would post like the pencils and then the washes and stuff. And he was really, really like I don't even think he had done pro work it, it, for sure not in the United States. And uh, we were all kind of like, hmm, who's this guy? He's pretty good. Look at him now. 
but yeah, you would just like stumble on this like random stuff. I mean, you do now too, but it, it, it was it was harder to track things down, and there was less of it. Now, if you find an artist you like, and you can usually find three spots online where they post, and within five hours, you know everything about them, and you're kind of like over it. <laughs> It's like, that was good. I need a cigarette. I'm going to rest. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is awesome. It, it was, I was tempted to not shoot a book today because of the glare. I, just over these shiny page books, but there's not much I can do. And don't smoke. I don't. I never have. So, if you smoke, give it up. Man, that guy is so cool. That's intense. Ah, oh, man, it was so good. What's funny is I hadn't really looked at lineal stuff in quite a long time. And, and uh, when I was going through my storage, um, I have, like, shelves. And my shelves are organized a little more artist centric than title centric it, it can be a variety of the two like i have a chunk that's just all batman um and i have a chunk that's all x-men i have spider-man and punisher and daredevil and stuff like that kind of thing um just old stuff that i've bought in collections but but generally I'll, I'll start to pull that stuff out and like then all my arthur adams is together all my michael golden is together my lineal and yeah i hit the the chunk of lineal and i was like oh man this will be fun to look at and it is. So I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, uh, uh. Man, the costumes are so cool. Let's go pay this. We'll, we'll hustle in a second, but we can just sort of soak in this first story. Really nice layout there, man. Lineal was real fun to ink. I have to say it was very kind of almost like relaxing would be like the right word for it. It just felt, it was a really, really good fit. I, I had come off of inking Travis and um, Lineal stuff was like a very sort of calm version of Travis where it was like, bigger shapes but kind of the same sort of rendering idea at least at the time so it was it was pretty um like fun to do kind of easy to do it made sense to me sometimes you know honestly as an inker i get paired up with people that the, the penciler's work doesn't fully um, make sense to me just you know i have a different sense of aesthetics or a different um sort of like line weight or whatever it can be but yeah i mean it's like sometimes it clicks and sometimes it's a little harder to find your footing that's a really nice like tilt of the guy's head I'm like hoping i can get through this video without editing it but i have a hunch it's not gonna happen uh, it's so good he does really, really good bad guys. His bad guys are super intense. Look at this. Him. This is so great. Man. This is one of those books that I think has aged really, really well. The storytelling's just awesome. I'm trying to get the right angles for a no glare. Damn. So good. Hey, oh, did he? He did. Cut that dude's head off. What the hell? Man, that is so good. And that is the first issue. So, again, Lanil and Jerry on this one. Really beautiful one. And a uh, very cool cover. What's great about Lanil, too, is I mean, he actually blends a lot of styles that I like. He's into Mignola. He's into Kevin Nolan. He's into, like, a lot of the Japanese sort of, um, like, anime and manga, um, 
you know, you can see Frank Miller or Jeff Darrow and, and it's like Jim and Willis and Travis and it's like just goes on and on. So he's definitely, definitely um, like got the same sort of interests as I do for sure. Bisley for Zed, I'm sure. Isn't that cool? Look at that layout. Beautiful. Now I picture someone toiling away with their 3D models trying to get this all set up. <laughs> it's like, you can just draw it, friends. <laughs> it's beautiful, though. God dang, he did such a great job. And I, I actually do think that Lineal mixes in models now in his stuff. But back then, back then I don't think he was technology really wasn't there that was that easy easily accessible i mean it was definitely out there but man it's so great god dang wow yeah this is this is looking the best that it's ever looked to me today oh that's nice god man it's so kick-ass What's that, Brody? Look at that guy's face. It's crazy, because it's like... There's a dude, I think, with like a red mask in here, but it, maybe a... I should actually read the story. It's been a long time. I don't remember it. That might be something to do. Oh, man. It is early in the morning. So you've got Mellow Rich. Not super mellow, though. I wanted to get this video up early as possible. And then I've got to work today. And hopefully write a little bit later or during the day sometimes I just write like when it when, when ideas start to come to me I'll just stop for a while and write what I've got on my mind comic stuff mm -mm. that is really cool look at that damn robot man what you doing mm -mm -mm. Oh, that's so good. Damn. He did Wolverine and then I think either X-Men or Uncanny X-Men for Marvel. And then, um, what else was he doing over there? I'm trying to think what the evolution was. He actually did a Batman Danger Girl uh, story that's actually pretty cool. If you if you can find that, grab it. It's good. Hmm. What else did he do? Oh, he did High Roads was another one. With uh, Scott Lobdell, I think, wrote that. That's really cool. Was was neat to see how influential Travis was to people. I mean, he really, really made an impact on on honestly probably the top tier Marvel artists. I mean, I think across the board, a lot of those guys really owe a, a debt to sort of the quirky and sort of visionary nature of Travis's work because I think he definitely. I mean, you can just run down the list of. Steve McNiven, Granov, Koypel, Jimmy Chung, Lineal. Um, there, there's probably more that I'm not thinking of, but all those guys were way into Travis and immediately started putting Travis isms into their stuff. Because it was so damn cool. Man. 
Man, that is awesome. This dude knows how to draw pages, man. They're so cool. His layouts are great. I mean, just the, the way he stacks stuff through the page. It's really, really beautiful, like, layout. His tack is just awesome. It's always been so good. Wait, one, actually, three. Another uh, sort of prelim digital like mock up. It's really nice. These have all been Jerry's inks. Man, that guy gets smoked. Kind of speechless. It's just kind of cool to look at it. I haven't seen this in a long time. I usually pull out the single comics, but I found this. I thought this would be easier to just bring in. Okay. Let's see. Oh, God, the glare. I hate it. This is actually nice paper for the book, though. It's funny because as, as much as it's a pain in the ass to um film it, it actually is nice and it looks very, very clear. It's got a great reproduction. So I can't complain as someone who actually inked pages in this book because uh, it's really, really nicely done. And this is a soft cover too. It's not a hard cover. So it's, it's probably be a little more affordable. That's really cool. Man, just does great page designs. I almost did Jay Lee Wildcats trilogy, and uh, I just didn't want to search for the comic books right now. I definitely have them in my office somewhere. So I always keep a little stack of Jay Lee around because this stuff is so damn cool. She's like, I know it. Jay Lee's cool. I like it too. Hmm. <laughs> Who's got two thumbs and likes Jay Lee? This guy <laughs> and her. We like Lineal too. That's why we're doing this video. That's nice. Dave did really, really nice colors on this. Although I have one minor complaint. You'll see it in my story. <laughs> this is cool. It was a shot just like this. It's funny enough. Oh. <laughs> He like soft focused on all these buildings that I did, but I spent a lot of time on it. And I was just like, "Oh, come on, dude! Seriously, we'll see how it, what I think now. It's been long enough where where I can separate myself from the amount of work that it took and the actual reproduction that it takes." Okay, I keep getting interrupted. This is nice. It's cool, too, because, like, Lanil is one guy that um, I actually think, like, he'll take his, like, what I would picture what his sketches originally look like, and he's able to keep those chunky blacks in it. It's not easy to do, because um, a lot of times you, in your sketches, like, say if you take a Sharpie and you kind of block in where you're going to put your shadows, um, it can be really, really difficult to integrate that into, like, finished pages, um, especially on faces, because it can look, like, really, really just, like, black paint sort of slapped on a face, so... I'll show you what I mean when we get it, because he does it all the time. He 
his big eyes. <laughs> Even like the shadow kind of under the eye. I mean, those are tra those are pretty traditional shadows, but again, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Even things like this to render out of that and stuff and have it blend in, it can be tough. This is issue four. I did issue five. Really, really nice cover. I'm pretty sure Lineal did the covers himself. Like, I think he might have even inked them. Like, pencil. Looks like there's. Maybe. This could have been colored over pencils, if possible. Of these kind of quick you can see the shadows here what I'm talking about too with that it pulls that down oh man look at that <laughs> that guy's so cool somewhere I think I have like a Lanil sketchbook I haven't seen it in a long time I'll try to find that I was thinking about starting to do like sketch sketchbook um flip throughs because I have a ton would be kind of fun and something uh, not maybe different but different than than just doing a uh, comic book work and, and the other one that i almost did is i almost did the frazetta sketchbook but i was pretty sure i had done it before so i was like eh and i kind of wanted to do something comic book related so there were a lot of things pulling me towards something more uh sequential I will do Wildcats Trilogy, though, at some point, because it's an interesting book, and it's actually quite detailed for Jay Lee. He was definitely kind of blending his super chaotic and weird style, but with the level of detail that, that he really almost rarely used after that. He did, like, a G.I. Joe Transformers book or something like that. It was really detailed. Yeah, he kind of goes back and forth. Sometimes this stuff is more simple. Sometimes it's not. I found these Spider-Man issues too that he had done. They're pretty cool. It's like an arc, like three. I think they're three issues. It's pretty fun. I'll link to Lineal's uh, social media um, and uh, you know definitely follow him if you're not already. I would assume most people know Lineal's work. Hopefully, I'm saying his name right. I have heard people pronounce it Lionel, but I, I think that's Lanil, but who knows? Maybe I'm totally wrong. I'm trying to picture Will saying it right now, and I can't. <laughs> I'm hearing Lanil, but, but, but I, I... That is sort of a fun part about being a comic book fan, is like learning how to pronounce all your favorite artists' names if they're, uh, if they're unusual. It's Mignola, not Mignola. <laughs> the Mignola one always makes me laugh just because they'll he'll do interviews with people where they're going to sit and talk to him for 45 minutes, and then they introduce him and it's wrong. And I'm just like, oh, come on. It, that, that is always really funny. It happens more often than you would think. That is really nice. Man, that is so cool. Man, he's so good. This is a great shot of the bike, too. Damn. That's awesome. 
Yeah, for sure, for sure, seek out that Batman Danger Girl. It's a really fun, it's a fun looking comic. I wasn't originally going to go through this whole book, but at this point, we might as well just do it. It's Sunday. It's super fun. We all need to chill. <laughs> Man, it's cool. This was all done traditionally. I know he sent me pencils. So I penciled or inked over the original boards. And I'm sure Jerry did too. So yeah, this was all drawn on 11 by 17 comic book paper. Like smooth board. And here comes my issue. My fill-in. It was really an honor. I mean, honestly, I was very excited. It was such a cool little thing. I was kind of on a roll, though. I had inked Travis. And I had inked Chris Bacolo. I might have even still been inking Bacolo when I did it, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was cool. There was a lot of opportunities, you know, so. this one shot a little dark, honestly, it looks a little muddy the reproduction of it. I you know what? I kind of remember that in the comic that was a little dark. Yeah, this is dark. Really dark actually. Wow. Okay. Man, that's crazy. But you know the thing is is I I'm not that closely attached to the issues that I didn't work on. But uh yeah, that's funny. This this page coming up is really muddy. I I've, I've shared this in black and white online a million times and it's there's so much fine detail on it. But, like, it still looks cool. Even this. The lines on that, like, guy's face in the middle are so thin. But they don't really look at, like, there. This was kind of interesting. Is he, I think in the original, had the guys running the opposite way. And they actually flipped uh, this panel so that the storytelling would read differently. It was interesting. so dark <laughs> this too goodness gracious it's funny well at least you get an honest reaction to it it's it's not i don't know if it's the color so the reproduction of the colors like this oh man there's all this like line work in here you can kind of see it it's almost gone that's not a huge deal, though, but it's just interesting to see it after all this time. And that's really dark, too. Hmm. Oh, this is dark, too. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's funny. I don't even remember the colors, honestly, being these colors. That's that's what even makes it weirder. It's like, I don't remember sort of that, that earthy magenta... Like, you see the, like, the detailing in the neck and stuff like that? It's not a big deal. Like, I don't mind if that stuff sort of fades out a little bit. This is, this page printed well. Now, see, this actually looks good. It's funny, but you, this actually looks more what I would have imagined that was going to look like. It's funny. I can tell right away. See, like, the fine lines on him really showing up well. Interesting. This is very dark, too. It's such a cool issue, though. Oh, man. <laughs> 
very dark. Man, you know, that is an interesting thing. Now I'm really, really curious to look at the comic book and see if the comic printed this dark. So there was an interesting thing going on at Wildstorm around this time. And what it was is when, when I would turn in my pages at Wildstorm, not just me, but anyone, uh, production would actually scan your art and then they would format it for color. And generally speaking, for whatever reason, I never could understand this as I moved further along in my career, they would usually give it to like an intern, you know, someone that had just kind of showed up on the scene. Okay, so this is the um, that shot I was talking about. Let me finish what I was saying. And so um, you'd have these people that had been working at the studio for like a week and they're formatting these files, these line art files, and they're going into Photoshop and they're leveling them for color. And uh, if they didn't have a good eye for what looked right or what they thought would print well, you know, which which comes from experience, honestly, um, you would get mud. And one of the issues that Travis and I did at Wildcats printed really, really dark because of that, because they had automated settings. So they would just run um, like a, I, f I forgot what you call it, like a run, a, like a preset thing for, for any page. And uh, it wouldn't always behave well for, you know, all different styles. But anyway, so I, I don't think that's what this is. This is just dark colors. But I'm trying to show you, like, so all that is rendered. I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually line work throughout all of that stuff that I did. It took hours. You see all that detail in the smoke? He totally blurred it. I just think that... To me, I don't understand as a colorist why you would see something that looked so nice in black and white and then just obscure it. That's my opinion. I generally would not complain about that. I just thought that was one time that really stood out as it didn't really make sense to me. The buildings look good, though. I mean, you can still see what I did with all those. You, stop coloring so dark. <laughs> this looks cool, though. I like this. This page over here looks nice. It's funny, I sort of remember this page and I sort of don't. I remember this panel. I don't really remember this panel. But I do remember this page. Some of these, I think what it is, is I have photocopies of them, like high-res photocopies in a... I just haven't looked at them all the time. Oh, that's so cool. And yeah, I haven't seen that page in a long time. Ooh, that's so cool. Oh yeah, this. It's really weird. It makes me wonder, like, did Jerry's issues print this dark? I didn't, you know, again, because I didn't work on them, I don't know what the black and white art looked like, but so cool. Look at the detail on that guy's arm. Looks so badass. <laughs> He's like, hey, hey, hey. I'll have to do a director's cut of this one day and I can go and I'll do the um, black and white versus the color. That would actually be kind of cool. That'll be my new, my new thing. I haven't seen people do that yet. A director's cut video <laughs> of, of, co of comic art, like where you show the, the inks versus the color line art and then uh, narrate it. Now, right. Follow me on social media. This next page will look familiar because I've shared it a bazillion times. It's good once a year to bust out. <laughs> but, this, but again, it's very, very dark. But there's all this like line work. Man, Lanil is just brutal. He brings it. Fire. <laughs> I've asked this before, but, like, I love to make sound effects when I'm reading comics. When people are powering up and stuff like that. I'm always, like, making, like, little noises. 
if not out loud in my mind. <laughs> Looks like Northern Lights. Mm. Okay, we're on the last issue. This will be a long video, but you know what? What do we... We need things to entertain us right now. So this will be nice. A reprieve... Look at that. That thing is so cool. Man, dude, it's big. Love that shadow there. It's really nice. Oh, man. Millennial makes it look fun. It's like Quaypel. Like, Quaypel, oh, like, whenever I look at a good Olivier Quaypel comic book, I always get really excited to draw. It's like, you can't help it. You just see it. And one, like, Olivier in particular, he kind of makes it look easy. Not so much like his painted covers, but like his his pages. It just, they look like they make so much sense that, that I always get, like, fired up. And, and then you realize, like, how simple he makes it look and how obvious... It's like, of course to draw it like that. And then you're like laying your stuff out and you're like, oh man, I suck. <laughs> we should do, um, uh, what was the, the book that he just did? I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. It's so good. Was his image book that was bought by Netflix? Mark Millar wrote it. I just can't think of it. Magic something or Magic Order? Sorry. It's kind of cool how he took the anatomy and then turned it turned it robotic. Like it just looks like chunks and panels. It was really cool. <sighs> Until the next life. Man, this story looks awesome. I'm almost done. I want to see the last pages. Nope, I'm going to pause it. Each one of these final pages is going to be completely impossible to flip to because of the way the book is bending right now. That's a nice panel right there. That's a really good drawing. This is cool. The pages are like not laying this up right. Oh, I got one. We have one minor success. That's nice, too. Kaboom. You can see the, the detail definitely sort of parsed out at the end. He's not putting as much here. That's really nice, though. This is a lot of panels on this page, though. Honestly, it's not a ton, but one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess the top tier made it feel like more. I would have guessed eight. I don't know why. All right, we're going to wrap this up. There's a few sketches in the back and then a uh, crazy face-off. Man, that is wild. That's a nice drawing, too. Oh. 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 <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Alright. There's a few sketches in the back. We'll check them out. We'll peep them. It'll be fun. <laughs> Kid's face. The, the final page. That's cool. Yep, 
Very nice. The end. I mean, here's some sketches. His digital stuff was getting really good at this point. sketchbook oh come on really that was it one little page of sketches that was weak <laughs> not his fault but okay all right have a great day smash the like and i will talk to you later have a good one look at that look at that detail so good